Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. It is great to be back in the house of the Lord. So grateful and honored that we are able to come. Amen. I don't know if there's any other place I'd rather be on a Wednesday night. There might be many places where or a lot of people are. But I'm grateful that you and I are in the house of the Lord. Because this is the only place, my brothers and sisters, that we are able to gather in the spirit of unity of worship and praise. And I want to ask everyone that could, I know that if you are not able, please don't feel like you have to, but could you stand? Amen. I want us to go before the Lord in prayer. We have many needs that are here tonight, and I know that we have a need supply in God. Hallelujah. Has anybody ever been healed, touched, or delivered? God has made a way out of no way for you. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm grateful that the, the current circumstances is already, amen, on the mind of God, and he's already at work. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor, how can you make such a bold statement? Simply because the Bible says he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above and beyond what we can ask or think. Do you realize that God knows so much about you? He knows your thoughts. And before you can even think your praise, God says, I've already got an answer on your way. Amen. Hallelujah. So I want us to pray for Sister Linda Mosley. I know she is watching tonight. Amen. And we prayed over some prayer calls that were getting sent to her. And uh, Sister Linda, we are praying for you and your beautiful family. And uh, we just going to refuse to allow the enemy, amen, to just do what he wants to do. Hallelujah. We pray for uh, Emily Lewis that needs a miracle in her body. Amen. This is a very young uh, couple. And uh, so I want to see God uh, miraculously heal Emily's body. Amen. I know God is able. They found some more uh, concerns in her body with cancer. But I know a God that's greater than cancer. I know a God that's greater than death. If God could bring back Lazarus had been dead for four days, what can he do with a body that still has got breath in it? Oh, my goodness. Come on, church. I need somebody with some faith. Brother Ken, I know you're watching by the way of live stream. We love you, sir. You and Sister Elizabeth, you are on our hearts and our prayers. Amen. I want us to continue to pray for uh, a rise up recovery, that every addiction to be broken, every strong man to be bound, and every uh, wall to be torn down. Amen. I believe it. I want us to pray for our community. Most of you know if you are anywhere around a Facebook page with everything that's been going on, some events that happened, at our school, and I want us to pray for our community. Amen. Amen. I don't know if you realize it or not, but that's enough that the devil would love to try to start something. But I come against it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to pray about it covered in prayer. Amen. If you have a need here tonight, would you lift it up by the raising of your hand? Amen. Jesus said, before you even ask or think, I already know. So would you go ahead right now and begin to touch heaven's throne? If you're watching by the way of the web, will you begin to, in your home right now, will you begin to call on the name of Jesus? Heavenly Father, right now, we ask today for our, our country. We're asking God that you would reach down from the balconies of heaven and touch and move and minister. I pray, God, that through the power and the authority of the Holy Ghost, God, that you would send revival. God, from the east coast to the west coast, I'm asking God from the north to the south, God, let there be a move of your glory. Let the glory of God begin to circle the earth. I pray, God, the Lord, for our government, those that are making decisions. I pray, God, against anything, God, that is against your word, anything that's against your plan and your purpose. I pray against it in the name of Jesus Christ. God, you're a God that's able to bring what's done in darkness to the light. And I pray, God, for our country. I pray, God, for our churches, Lord, that's, that's spread across this nation. I pray, God, for them today. Sin revival. 
In Jesus' name, I pray, God, for Sister Linda, for Emma. I pray for Emily and Ken. Brother Ken, I pray for every stronghold to be broken. I pray for the return of our prodigals. I pray, God, today, uh, Lord, that you would touch our community. I pray, God, for our school. I pray for our children. Uh, I pray, God, for the Lord. I, I'm privileged to be able to go and have prayer meeting with our teachers. Uh, and, God, I'm praying, Lord, God, that the Holy Ghost would walk into that building. Uh, let the glory of God begin to walk up and down in every hall. Let angels be dispatched in that school. Uh, devil, you're not going to control our community. Devil, you cannot just wreak havoc in, while the church is still here. In Jesus' name, anybody believe that? Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise uh, if you believe that we can and we are making a difference. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Please remember tomorrow morning, early morning sacrifice, 5 o'clock. Anybody that can make it, we welcome you to come. And uh, Friday night, Rise Up Recovery. If you want to come and be a part of that, I promise you, you will be blessed. Amen. But I pray that you come to be a blessing. Amen. This is not something to aware that we're asking you to come. Amen. And you just get lost in everything. We're asking you, the church. I'm asking the church. Come and be a blessing to somebody else that is so desperate and looking to get their lives, amen, connected with Christ. Amen. I'm very grateful and thankful for what he's doing in Rise of Recovery. Amen. And I'm just believing even greater things. Hallelujah. I believe God's doing something, Sister Amanda. Sister Candy, I believe God, God zeroed some things in on Sunday morning. Amen. And Monday night. And I believe God is about to give us a great harvest through that wonderful ministry. Easter service is Sunday. Uh, we are going to have a special Easter worship service. And we're asking everybody to please be here. We only have one service. Everybody say 1030. 1030. So we're only going to have one service. And then afterwards, we're going to have a bunch of uh, games and Easter egg hunt and, and just a whole lot of other gun of games and having a great time. And uh, and you know, when we get together, there's going to be food involved. Amen. Amen. Uh, I came home this evening and Brother Pepper and Sister Frankie dropped off some Boston butts. And so uh, there's going to be plenty of pulled pork. And, and anybody like to eat that kind of stuff? I hope you will. If you don't, I'm just going to keep, my, I'll keep some of them in my house then. Hallelujah. Amen. But I'm looking forward to that. Brother Cody, um, Double E Smokehouse. Amen. He's going to be uh, preparing those for us. And uh, so you don't want to miss that. It's going to be great food. Men's Conference. If you have not yet signed up for Men's Conference, it's April the 29th, May the 1st. And we're asking all the men to please try uh, I, I, it's been two years since we've been able to go. Last year there was nothing going on. So I just pray that we would have a great showing from here, from POLC to go and be a part of Men's Conference. Has anybody never been to Men's Conference? Seth, 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 Seth. <laughs> You're going this year. <laughs> Amen. It's Sister uh, Sister Donica live without you for about three days. Okay. That's all I need. It says I just need permission. <laughs> Amen. But I promise you, it is an absolutely amazing time. And uh, I was able to, well, Brother Lane was able to secure a little cottage. And every evening, uh, ever, all of our men are going to go to the cottage and we're going to have a time of just some cook. Brother Cody's coming and uh, so he's going to cook for us so we're going to have a great time of eating again. Amen. So uh, if you want to come, we invite you to be a part of men's conference. It's time for our tithe and offering. Amen. We're going to give you a chance to give it to the Lord. Amen. Um, God has blessed us, and the blessings come through so many different avenues. And I don't know uh, how you look at it, but um, the little extra little check that come in the mail called stimulus. 
I, I told the Lord, thank you. Amen. Jesus said, you'll live in houses you didn't build and you'll eat from, from vineyards you didn't plant. Why can't we have money that we didn't sow for? Oh boy, that just went over like a lead balloon. I know, I just picked up on your spirit. I know, I know where your mind just went with that statement. Let me rephrase that. God can bless you in any avenue that he can. So get your mind off of that free money, what I just said. It was a blessing. And I thank God for the blessing. Amen. However and whoever he wants to send it through. Amen. 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 And a couple of little nickels might not have meant nothing to you, but it's sure. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to take mama out twice this week. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Such an honor to be able to give back to God. There's such a sweet move of God here. give that. And we don't give that because we give. We give that simply because God's good. Amen. So Heavenly Father, I pray for this offering. God, I know what I felt that just walked into this building. God, I ask you, Lord, would you bless this offering. And God, give back, God, to these precious and wonderful people who week in and week out, God, so into the kingdom. And God, I pray our covering. I pray the devour off the Lord God of the finances of this church and the finances of their homes. I pray, God, what the devil would love to try to come in and devour, God. Uh, but, Lord, their money is going to be better. It's going to be more than the month. Uh, God, not everybody can say, God, because they have more month than money. Uh, but I pray, God, this is not about prosperity. This is about being blessed, God. And I pray today, God, that you would bless these wonderful people who give so, the Lord, so many times in so many ways. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you. Bring your tithe and offer and your building fund. Amen. Whatever commitments to the Lord.
anybody coming to this house tonight just needing something? Did you come tonight just needing a little, a little pick-me-up? Well, Jesus is more than just a little pick-me-up. When he reached down, he says he rescued us. Our sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of his glory. Chains break at the weight of his glory. It doesn't matter what you're facing. It doesn't matter how heavy it is. It doesn't matter how we feel about it. Jesus is still the one on the throne. And his name is above every name. So I want us, as we sing this, I want everyone to sing it with us. I don't, I don't need to just sing it alone. I want everybody to sing it tonight. And I want you to sing it like you believe it. I want you to sing it like it means something to you. That Jesus has rescued us. He's reached down. He's grabbed us from those places that, that we've gotten ourselves into. And Jesus has pulled us up. I needed rescue. My sin was heavy. The chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter. I was an orphan. And you called me a citizen of heaven.
lift your voice and sing it out. chapter uh, 24 uh, it says and behold I send the promises of my father upon you but then he does something and he said but tarry everybody say tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem and then he gives another word says until say until Amen. ye be endued with power from on high in this set of scripture, the word tarry simply means to linger or to remain. Jesus is telling his disciples, whatever you do, don't leave this place. Just tarry, linger, remain where you are. And then the very next word he said, until. The word until basically means while waiting for. While waiting for. I 
want to talk to us for the next few moments on this simple thought that I feel that God dropped in my spirit, but has so much incredible impact if we can leave it, live it. And this simple word is this, until. Until. Every one of us in this building tonight, you've had to live with some untils in your life. I got a word from the Lord for somebody or everybody in this building. And if you'll just if you'll just listen, that hourglass that you see in that picture, them sands have been running for a long time. But somebody here tonight, your until has finally come to where the last grain of sand is now dropping from the top to the bottom. And now there is a release. God, let it come out of me the way it, you put it in me. I pray, God, tonight that you would speak, God, to me as an oracle and as a vessel of the Lord. Take a coal off of the altar and touch, the, God, my lips of clay so that nothing would hinder, God, the voice that the people need to hear in this service tonight. And if you're going to receive the word, would you just say amen? amen. You can be seated. The greatest challenge is for us in this 21st century is having to deal with the until moments in our lives. I don't know about anybody in this building, but I know for myself, I'm not the type of guy that just likes to just sit there, uh, especially on a hot day in a traffic that has not moved in the last two hours. Somebody talk to me. I'm not the type of guy that just likes to sit around and, uh, and just not do anything. There, there's, in our quarantine during the, uh, the COVID incident uh, last year, um, I, I, just sitting around the house is just, it's not the, it's just not what I like to do. I like my moments where I have some chill out time, but just sitting around day after day, uh, something, got to change. And so the hardest thing for some of us here today uh, is to deal with is those until moments that God brings us to. Uh, we live in such a fast-paced life that it has, it is literally has taught us that waiting is not an option because we can't afford it. Because you have to run, you have to go, you have to, amen, you have to go faster, you have to buy a vehicle, and you have to make sure that this vehicle goes a little faster than the last vehicle I had. I gotta, I gotta make sure that we just, we, we gotta be doing, we, we're living in such a fast paced life that sometimes when God sends the until moments, and you're gonna understand this in just a moment, that sometimes that's the hardest thing for you and I to have to deal with and face because we don't like sitting still. I never have been one of those type people Amen. That likes to just curl up on a sofa, grab a book, and read it. <laughs> I pray for people. Anybody? And I'm sorry if you're in here like that. That's your thing in Jesus. Amen. I'm just not that type of guy. Amen. And uh, so I heard it said one time that we serve a crop pot God. In a, microwave, in a microwave world. And sometimes when God begins to do what he does, he doesn't put us on the fast lane, but he puts us on the slow lane. And sometimes the frustrations of the trust, because we have it in our own minds and how we think that it should turn out, and we put a time limit on when it should be done. God works in a different timetable than what you and than what I do. That's the reason why, brothers and sisters, he said in his word that you and I must walk by faith. For faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. When you pray and you begin to seek God in certain areas of your life, you have to know 
that God has been working all along, but you just couldn't see it until faith reaches in with hope and hope pulls into something that was not a reality but becomes a reality. Right. You, you can rush things if you want, but you just ain't going to get the flavor on somebody. Uh -huh. My sweet wife, for our anniversary dinner last night, decided she was going to do some steak and some and some shrimp. Just sh I, easy, <laughs> easy, but <laughs> <Ooh>. easy. <laughs> I like to went on the blooper file. <laughs> So, what had happened, what had happened was, we, uh, I go out there and I, I mean, two hours before we start the fire, I squirt it down with the lighter fluid, so I know it was good and soaked, and, and uh, so about when it was time to put the steaks on the grill and the shrimp on the stick, and, uh, Wisdom does kick in every so often. And uh, so it just wasn't getting hot enough. The grill wouldn't get up to about 200. And, and man, it didn't matter. Over on the corner, I just kept squirting the. Uh, uh, <laughs> Brother <Bubba. laughs> Only Brother Bubba can truly understand that statement. So uh, then. Double Leaf Smokehouse come to the rescue, Brother Cody, and he decided he was going to throw some wood on the smoke side, and, and uh, he was going to take some more of that starter fluid, and he was going to get that wood going. And uh, so, just trying to rush the process, he left the other door open so the wind draft could get in there and start that wood. And I had the big lid shut, and the next thing I knew, I happened to open the big lid, and there was a flame that was reaching from one side to the other. Now, I can eat blackened shrimp, but not that. There was nothing really enjoyable about some of the charcoal shrimp on a stick. You can rush stuff if you want. You, you, you can. You force things. You can, you can get involved and you can push things in your own accord. And you can, you can shove that door open though, no matter how much resistance God keeps pushing it back against it. You can force that door open. But you, 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 you can force the fire, but I, the flavor is just not going to be there. My steaks were tough and the shrimp were burnt. <laughs> Best thing to do was to eat the stick. <laughs> we can try to rush the process if we want, but we won't be able to stand when the times of trouble come. There is a purpose why God gives us the until moments. Because he's working a far greater work in us and through us that at the precise moment you can't see it. The fire is causing you to be tempered and being tempered makes you stronger. You can hold things better. You can stand against things better because the process of the fire has caused a tempering in you. What does the Bible say? The Bible says that our, <clears throat> our faith is tried by fire. Fire is what sometimes God uses in the until moments of our life. In our uh, scripture text, Jesus is he's already died, he's already resurrected, and now he's standing in front of the disciples. And he's telling them, he said, the whole reason I went through the whole process was for this one reason, because I'm with you, but he said, I shall be in you. Mm -hmm. there, was, there was fixing to become a transitional moment 
to where that God was going to move from the outside and come to the inside. So through this process, he said, gentlemen, you need to tarry. You need to stay here and don't leave. You need to stay here until the promise comes. So Jesus told them that they would be uh, fulfilled with the promise, but they had to deal with the until before it finally came to pass. Now, I don't know, I, my, my mind immediately goes to Peter as being one that cannot sit still. Because he's always the anxious one. Mm -hmm. he, he, he had ADHD to the highest. He was the one that was always outspoken. He was always doing things. So I can only imagine his response as Jesus began to tell him, you got to stay right here. Jesus didn't give them the time frame. We now know the time frame because we know that after the event. But at the time, these men did not know the time frame that they would have to tarry or until that moment would be over. But they trust the process. Just because God has given you and I a word does not mean that it's going to happen within the next 10 minutes. Though many times it does cause an instant, uh, an immediate response or healing, deliverance, answers come, direction comes. But if you, if you will not allow, listen to Pastor, if you will not allow the, in, the until rob, the until moment, rob you from your miracle and keep walking in faith, I believe God is going to show even greater things than you have ever experienced in your life. Amen. Amen. There is something that God is bringing this wonderful church to and, and myself simply because, amen, I, I, the word comes through me. So I know that i got to be the first partaker of the word. I have to line myself up to what the word said. And God has been dealing so amazingly with this church in preparation for something great. I haven't seen the full picture of it yet, but I believe God is going to do something major and mighty, not because of I'm here or even you're here, but because we allow the presence of God to have its free course when and wherever he wants. I want to be a church that releases God's presence to do whatever and whenever he so chooses. Amen. In Numbers 23 and 19, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. He has said, and will he not do? Or has he spoken, and will not make it good? You see, there's been many times in our hearts and our lives in our walk with God that he told us, instead of just going, you need to stay. Instead of just experiencing, you need to wait. It, instead of just running off and, and, and just running into the, and, and making a mess out of things, sometimes God tells us you've got to tarry. Right. Not now. Right. Wait. There's an until moment that you and I are going to have to get to the place you're going to have to trust God with your until. Right. Right. Amen. He's a God. And he's a God that changes not. And if he doesn't change, his word doesn't change. The requirements don't change. I'm going to say it again. Mind, heart, soul. It's got to be connected and braided into one accord. You've got to have godliness, holiness, and righteousness. Braid those into one accord. You gotta have Bible reading, fasting, and prayer. Braid that into one cord. Take those three cords, break that together, and you've got an ability, amen, to walk through whatever waiting moment or until moment because you finally learned this is not about you and your will, it's about him and his will. Amen. Abraham, I am going to make a mighty nation out of you. 
And there's going to be a great nation that's going to come from out of you. You don't have any children yet. How many ever had a yet moment in your life? You, you, you've got to, I'm telling you, you, you these, these are small little simple little words, but they have an incredible impact if you'll learn how to use them in the correct form of trust and faith and belief in God. <coughs> You don't even have any children yet, Abraham, but I'm going to make a mighty nation out of you. And the clock, the clock is ticking. I know you're 100 years old, but the until moment. You see, Abraham had a word, but it didn't happen on Abraham's time frame. It still took a process of until, the waiting period, the moment where the word spoken and the word being fulfilled is a until moment. And if we're not careful, you will get lost in your until. Amen. But God was trying to tell Abraham, you've got to do one thing and you've got to learn how to trust me even in the process while you're waiting. Don't worry about the details. Just trust me. Your word of promise will always be challenged by the until. Abraham and Sarah got themselves in trouble simply because they couldn't handle the until moment. So they tried to force and they tried to get their hands involved in things that their hands should have been left off of. And God, amen's destiny and promise that he gave him was beginning to be altered by their plan and not their plan and not God's plan. You got to deal with the untils of your life. Stay with me. I'm gonna try my very best to rush through this. Not rush, but I want to get to the end of it. And God is basically just saying, Abraham, you gotta learn how to just trust me even through the process of the until. You're fighting the until moment, but the until moment. What have you been praying about? What has God specifically spoke to you and said, I'm going to do this for you? But it hasn't happened yet because you're standing dealing with the until moment of your life. God, through a, a promise in his word or through a word spoken over you and said, I'm going to bring your children in. I'm going to deliver them. I'm, I'm going to heal your body. But you're dealing with the until because it ain't happened yet. And the until moment is like a wall that keeps hitting you in the face. But God, you said, but I'm still dealing with this until because it ain't happened yet. Don't think that you have to make it happen through another source of your own. Don't get impatient and do something, amen, that's going to cause more until space. Lifting the until moment because God's got to now work something else out of us before he can complete the until moment. I wonder how many times that I have I sabotaged my ending of the until moment, but because I got impatient. And I got my hands involved in it. Now the until moment just got extended because God says, okay, in order for this to happen, now I got to get this out of the way. And God is trying to get you and I back into a place to where that when God says it, you just sit there and pray and fast and work until it comes showing up at your door and it shows up in your family and the promises of God are revealed in your life. Amen. you got to quit fighting with the until and just trust God that he's working a far greater work that you cannot see nor feel. Amen. 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 I text someone today and I said, God is never idle. He's never not working on your behalf. How can I say that 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 
uh, God is working everything out, but yet I don't trust him in the until moments of those, of those times. Jesus, again, has to reiterate to the disciples, and he tells them in Acts 1 and 4, Jesus had to emphasize, you need to be patient. You need, don't get in a rush. You need not to get up and hit the panic button and start hit the praise button. Don't get so lost. Brothers and sisters, I've come to tell you what a word from the Lord. God is working in the places you cannot see. It takes time. And time means nothing to God. So that's why you got to trust him that he's working. He reminds him again. Let me hurry. Acts 1 and 4. And while they were gathered together, he commanded them. Now, this is later on. This is after Luke. But now in, in Acts. He commanded them, do not leave. Jerusalem. Evidently, Jesus had to come back on the scene after his ascension and tell them, oh, you're getting antsy. You, 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 you're starting to feel flighty. You, you, you're, you're, about to, you're about to make a mistake. You, you're about to leave and you're going to miss the greatest moment of your life. Wait for the gift of the, the Father promised. He made you a promise. Yep. And he's good on his promise. Mm -hmm. And I know it's been a little time. You know how many days it was? 40 days had now transpired from Luke 24 to Acts 1. And 40 days has already got him getting nervous. Yep. And Jesus has to show back up on the scene and say, wait a minute, don't leave. To all get in the rush. Just because it ain't changed yet, don't, don't, don't leave. Because there's something that has been promised, and God's good on his promises. Which you have heard me discuss. Jesus said, I've discussed it with you. I told you about it. There's some things that I've been telling you, but you're not hearing what I'm speaking. God, give this church an ear to hear yes. what the Spirit is saying to the church. Yes. If you are not hearing what the Spirit is saying to you right now, then this until moment is going to frustrate you. Right. It's going to cause you to not sleep at night. It's going to cause you to look at all the problem instead of looking at all the right. right. They have to be reminded to wait. Forty days had now passed since the word of Jesus spoke to them in, in Luke chapter 24. We love operating in the flow of the Spirit because we like the scenic route that God takes us on. How many loves it? How many enjoy this weekend with Brother Ron Neer? Oh my goodness. If you didn't enjoy that, you need to see me in my office at the church. Amen. Because I'm going to tell you something, God took us on a journey. And it was absolutely amazing to see what God was doing and revealing and bringing to light in that message. And I love it when God does that. But what happens when you get to a Wednesday night and there's no aisle running and there's no hooping and hollering? But what do you do with that? I tell you what you do with it. you got to deal with the until. Because Ryan Neer did not bring the presence of God here. Brothers and sisters, if you think that we are bringing people in here so that we can have a move of God, you missed it. We bring these men of God in here simply because they got a word for the church. And the word that is, is what's going to release the presence of God. It's not the man. You gotta get your you gotta get your mind off of the man and get the spirit inside the man. 
That's what we got to understand. God has used great men. And Brother Ron Neer is a voice of the Lord for this church and for me your, as your pastor. And, and he's speaking. And we got to understand what he's saying. There's going to be a, an until that's going to challenge what he spoke. We love operating in the flow of the Spirit because we love the singing crowd. We love the things that we've seen and oh, how we love the places we've been. Please don't misunderstand me tonight. I, I love it when God is doing great and mighty things and what he has been doing here at PLC through Rise Up Recovery. Amen. You have no idea how that excites me to see people that are so hungry and yes. desperate yes. for them to walk into yes. this building not because I'm the pastor, but because the presence of God is here. And God brings divine revelation. And revelation brings them to response. Uh, amen. And they begin to become obedient. And we've now baptized in the last two months 24 people in the name of Jesus Christ uh, for the remission of their sins. Uh, amen. I've been, I close this, Amanda. I've waited for seven years to get this ministry up and going. Seven years I've been dealing with until, but it wasn't ready. We were not ready seven years ago, three years ago. I had to keep waiting and bumping my head against the until until God says, just keep bumping that wall. Bump it long enough, you'll find there's a door. Because the door is not going to be revealed until it's my time. Uh, his time. Um, but this could be a huge challenge when we get caught up in just the uh, emotional, when we get caught up in the feel good, when we get caught up with, oh my God, look how many got baptized, look how many people are coming, look how many people we had in services today. It's not about that. And if we're not careful, that will become a challenge to anybody who will be caught up in the excitement of God parting the Red Sea Amen. Destroyed all your enemies and the hand of God fighting for you as long as the ravens are feeding you and as long as the, the brook is still flowing its water and the walls have been knocked down and we're getting to own their gold and we own their silver. We're great. We're wonderful. Man, it's awesome. Until. God's trying to help us understand something, that there's some until moments that has been frustrating us. And he's wanting to liberate you from your frustration mm -hmm. because it's delay never means denial. God bless you. And what we don't understand is that God is working a far greater work. But I pray 20 hundred times mm -hmm. Over the same thing, just keep praying. Because you're frustrating yourself with the until. Oh, my God. Somebody's until is about to show up tonight. It's amazing to me what one night, what a one night can make a difference in somebody's life that don't get frustrated with the until. Oh, Joseph, you're going to, oh, they're going to bow down to you. He didn't see in that vision where he's getting sold and, and his brothers are mistreating him and, and they sell him off to slavery and now he's serving in a palace and then they lie on him. Now he's down in a prison. Right, right. You don't see all of that no. because he's dealing with the until. Your head's banging against the wall because, God, you should have done this yesterday. And God says, you're frustrating yourself because I got you in a process called until. And if you'll just trust me with the until, the great things are going to unfold because I'm not a God that lies. I don't have to ask anybody for forgiveness because I don't tell lies. Oh, God, help us understand this word. Our lives are filled with amazing moments. And we should be grateful and thankful for the awesome things God 
does for our lives, the faithfulness of God, the provisions of God, and the promises of God. They are real. They are yea, and they are of amen. God will do what he said he would do. Joseph, don't get frustrated when it don't look like it's happening in your time frame. Because one night he woke up, amen, out of a prison cell with, a, with a, the command of the king called Joseph. I need him to interpret something. I don't know where your until moment is. But I tell you in the Holy Ghost today, God says your until moment is about to give way, amen, to the promise that I set for you and gave you in the beginning. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let me, let me hurry. It is so easy for us to get caught up when we are living in Isaiah 44. Isaiah 44, 3 and 4, it says, For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and flood and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessings upon thy offspring. We love it when everything is going right. right. We don't have to deal with the until because now we're living in the moment, in the spiritual moment, in the blessing, in the miracle. And as long as everything is on our time frame and God, but that's what I was talking about, God. Thank you. But what happens when I pray? Right. This time he don't answer it. Right. He don't fix it. Mm -hmm. He don't send the solution. <laughs> because there's an until moment you're going to have to walk through. Right. If I ever heard the Lord, I'm telling you, somebody needs to understand something. God is trying to get you to become, quit being frustrated with the untils of your life and know that he's working yeah. On your behalf yeah. to create yeah. things. But you've got to, in the process, you've got to be faithful. You've got to be true. You've got to be connected. You've got to be everything you're supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. How many of us has truly experienced those moments when nobody but God came through? How many can without doubt say that if it had not been for the Lord? Yeah. He brought me out of the miry clay and he set my feet up on the rock to stay. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, it makes me cry out, hallelujah. Yeah. It makes me want to run and shout and scream and tell everybody. But what about the moment when he don't? Then we recluse back into our shell and, and we forget so easily what he just brought us out of. And he's not doing the same thing with this particular situation. Anybody can think about uh, what God did through the process of this revival. That should be something we should magnify for. We should live for. But I can tell you something. I, I'm grateful that Brother Ron here said what he said because he, 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 he got a hold of your pastor. Because I kept reverting back to that Monday night and how great it was. And if we're not careful, we'll, we'll just keep looking back. Yeah. And God says, you just keep looking back and you're until... There was a reason why God did what he did that Monday night. For us to prepare for what he's going to do until tomorrow, in next week, in the next month, in next year, in the next building. In the ne Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the Bible is full of testimonies of how God made a way where there was no way. And I give God praise for these amazing blessings. Can you give me just a few more moments? But what do you do when God says, I need you to experience an until moment in your life? What do you do? How are you going to respond? How is that going to change your walk and trust and hope in God? I need to send you, Jesus will tell you sometimes, I need to send you up the mountain so I can show you something that you can't get while you're out busy and running around down here. I need you to stop everything. I love the old timer. He used to pray and he said, he said, Lord, don't just order my starts, but also order my stops. When I need to stop and listen, God, don't let me keep going. God will do for you and God will do for me what he did for the children of Israel if we will let him. But we ready, we're anxious and we want to get to the promised land. But if God sometimes has got to stop the cloud and he's got to stop the fire. 
Because there's some things, if you go into the promise right now, you're not going to be ready. That's right. Your promise will destroy you instead of bless you. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why there's some until moments, because God's got to prepare you. God's got to put you in training. God's got to impart some things in you. He's got to teach you some stuff before he can release you to do the things he wants you to do. What happens whenever God says, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm using you, you you're, you're, you're a vessel of the Lord, but what happens when, when God says, I need to transport you to the Isle of Patmos so you can write some things down for the end time church? What do you do with those moments? You just trust until. I heard somebody say years ago, Lord, really, I need you. To not just orchestrate some things in my life. I need you to orchestrate everything of my life. The children of Israel moved into a realm of total trust. When the cloud moved, they moved. When it stopped, they stopped. It's hard to set up a tabernacle whenever the, the, uh, you're, in, you're in motion. It's hard to set up, amen, the tabernacle plan God established in that wilderness as long as you're moving. There come times you're going to have to stop the wagons. You're going to have to unpack and set up a place for God's presence to show up in your presence. You'll get that later. Trust me, there will be moments you're going to have to stop everything and you have to get along with God until the moments and circumstances change. God is designed for us to focus on Him and God is wanting us to show, to show you and I something, but you can't do it unless you come to the until moment of your life. I've watched some of you walk through some of these things until moments, uh, until these moments of your life, these until moments in your life. Some have done well and some have, others have struggled. I've been watching and all of us has been on this journey uh, Brother Ken, we've all been on this journey with you and Sister Elizabeth. Uh, and I know you're in one of those until moments right now. There's no strength. You can't get up and move around and do the things you need to do. And, and I know it bothers you, sir. And I don't know why that there's the, 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 the extension of this until moment. But Brother Ken, Sister Elizabeth, I want to speak to you over this pulpit tonight and tell you that your until has an end. Seasons only can stay around so long, and then it has to give way to the next. Brother Ken, Sister Elizabeth, I speak over you now, over this pulpit, that your until moment is coming. Amen. Your until moment is coming to an end. I speak healing and strength into your body. Hallelujah. I know you've been battling with your until, but I believe the until is coming. Amen. To a close. I speak it in Jesus' wonderful name. You know what you got to do in your until moments? I'm probably going to finish this. You, you know what you got to do when these un, until moments are over? You got to do what Sister Elizabeth did two weeks ago on a Monday night prayer meeting. Yeah. When we put her on the phone so she can hear our prayers. Yeah. And she got in the realm of the Spirit and started speaking in tongues and the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. What we were supposed to be doing for her, it was flowing out of that phone into this building. That's what you got to do, brothers and sisters. When you're down on your luck, you need to find somebody to help. You need to find somebody to bless. You need to find somebody to encourage. Amen. 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 And you heard Sister Elizabeth as she began to pray and worship, amen, God, and to give him her everything. Hallelujah. He said, I, will, I, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. I'm, I'm closing with this. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Wow. You want to know why you got to tarry? You want to know why that you have to have to deal with the untils? Because God's still waiting for somebody to wake up faith. Because he knows if he comes right now, if he was to come before we walked out of that door tonight, would he find faith in you? And Jesus said, the whole reason why I'm tarrying is only because I'm trying to get somebody to have some faith. 
Will he find faith when he comes? The Bible tells us that these these last days, which are that we are living in, uh, shall be perilous times. It shall. It says that evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Amen. Be careful in your until moment that you don't get caught up. Be careful what voices you allow to speak into your life. I'm going to be bold enough just to tell you, if you've got more people speaking in your life than your pastor, you're wrong. Amen. Church, I deal with things all the time because they go into this one, they go into that one, and they go into this one. Then I have to pick up the pieces. If you will just get back into the place where you start putting authority of the man of God that's in your life and put authority back in him and let him speak into your life, you need to allow God while these until moments. You're not careful. Many will be deceived. And many are, are the deceiver themselves. There shall be per perplexity uh, and distress of nations. Are we not seeing that? Men's hearts shall fail them because of fear. For looking after those things which are coming on the earth, the hearts are failing. How many people are, are, are going off the deep end right now? Yeah. Scared, people commit suicide. Hospitals are full with people because of health conditions. Because they're dealing with the until. I'm telling you, that's why people are doing what they're doing because they're fighting frustration in the until. And let me tell you, if you're not, if you don't have an established prayer life, you're going to deal with it, and I'm going to deal with it. For there shall rise false Christ and false prophets. And shall uh, show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Be careful in your until moment. Amen. You don't get deceived. God is not mocked. And God is still on the throne. And his requirements are still the same. Now more than ever in these last days. Does that mean I need to quit? So here's what I want to tell you. You can stand. I'm, I'm done. I, there's so much more to this, but I'm going to I'll end it here. Don't allow the until to rob you of your promises, church. So POLC, here's what I felt the Lord speak to me. Tell POLC, keep believing. Yeah. Tell your brothers that are attending the church with you, keep reaching. Tell your sisters that are that attend the church, keep speaking. Yeah. It's going to be worth it all. Yeah. 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 Brothers and sisters, you know why it's so important for us to tarry? Because Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place that where I am, you may be also. And if you're not careful from the time he said it to the time that he comes, you're going to have to deal with this until moment. Don't get lost in the until. He said that. Luke 19 is how I'm close. I promise you'll close with this scripture. Luke 19 and 12. And they, and they heard these things. He added and spake a parable because he was uh, nigh to Jerusalem and because they thought that the kingdom of God should be immediately appear. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. Look at verse 13. And he called his ten servants. He delivered unto them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy until or till I come. Church, you're going to have to deal with this until moments in your life. Yeah. But whatever you do, stand strong, believe, reach in faith, and you will watch God as he begins to unfold. Amen. The next steps after this until moment is over. Amen.
I want to close it tonight. Is there anybody that just needs some prayer tonight? I, not that you, you, you know, you got major things, but you just, you just like for the church to pray for you, because you, you're just, you just, you just need some encouragement, because the enemy has just been bombarding, or you just got some things. I want to give opportunity to pray over you tonight, because I believe God wants to do something great. Anybody? Give you a chance. This is all in. Sister Darlene, Brother Mac. Yes. You dealt with this until you walked into this place, until God gave the word for tonight. Yeah. Yeah. God was looking for somebody to raise their hand and say, hey, look, Pastor, God, I, I, I need help with this until. I know the circumstances that you're facing. But you know what? Tonight, God doesn't want to just fix some stuff. He wants to fix it all. I need somebody that really has faith. I need somebody that really has faith to come stand with Pastor right now. And we're going to pray. Everything that's ever come against this family is about to leave. Everything that was hard is about to come easy. Everything that was far off was about to come close. In Jesus' name, I pray for a breakthrough in this family. In the name of Jesus Christ. God, right now, by the authority of the Holy Ghost, I speak, God, the Lord, over this family. God, we have been waiting. We have been praying. We have been seeking. We have been hoping. That God, the Lord, for this few moments, God, a few moments for this change. I speak, God, the Lord, over this family. I speak over Justin. I speak, God, the Lord, over their daughters. I speak, God, over your grandchildren. In the name of Jesus, I curse this family's coming against them. I take authority over them. I find it in the name of Jesus. You are greater. You are far greater, Jesus. And I speak in the name of Jesus. Be loosed in the name of Jesus. Be set free in the name of Jesus. Let their eyes be opened up. Let their eyes be opened to the reality. Let their eyes be opened to the truth. In Jesus' name. Thank you. 